the breath is food for the mind. Concentration is food for the mind. The mind goes around feeding on sights, uh, smells, tastes, sounds, tactile sensations. But it doesn't usually get much good food out of those things. That doesn't get much nourishment. It's like junk food. The more you eat, the hungrier you get. And it damages your system. If you're trying to find your happiness in places like that, it's really going to be bad for the health of the mind. That's why we look inside, not only to find a sense of well-being here, a sense of well-being that's harmless, but one that really is nourishing. And part of the reason why it's nourishing is that it requires that the mind develop skills. Because the happiness that comes from things outside doesn't require much skill. All you have to do is look or listen, and there you are. You get your pleasure. You get your little hit of pleasure. But the happiness that comes from meditation requires that you become more mindful, you become more alert. You develop concentration. You learn how to be persistent, put energy into your practice. And these are the qualities that really strengthen the mind. So what this means is in order to feed on this food, you have to develop strength. And that's why the food is good for you, because it maintains those strengths, it rewards those strengths as well. So when you find your mind looking for pleasure in places where it shouldn't, remind yourself there's better food here. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha has this analysis of the body into its different parts. You see that there's really nothing much there. And that's your body, and all the pleasures you look for in the world outside usually come down to pleasures for the body, and yet the body itself is nothing you'd want to—if you took off the skin, it's nothing you want to take home. If you put all the different pieces out on the floor, you'd have to wash it up immediately. And yet for so much of our lives, is centered on looking after the body, providing the happiness and pleasure for the body, and yet what's left? After a while, it gets sick, and it grows old, and then it dies. It doesn't show any gratitude at all. But if you look at pleasure for the mind, real pleasure for the mind, something that really is of substance, the mind rewards you, and it sticks with you. Even after the body dies, this sense of well-being, the, the good qualities you've developed in learning how to eat this food, the food of the concentration, the food of the breath, that goes with you. That provides a well-being that can carry you through aging, illness, and death. So remember that when the mind starts getting hungry and looking in all the wrong garbage cans for food, remember we've got really good food right here. It's nourishing, and it takes a little while to appreciate it. But once you learn how to appreciate it fully, then you realize okay, this is the best food you can find for the mind, because ultimately it gets to the mind to the point where it doesn't need to feed anymore. And that's when it finds true happiness.